When was the decision made to sell him or has that been your business plan as such since day one with the progeny that you breed? Yeah, generally sell them. We, we, we always wanted to race our first filly and our first colt. Um, my wife went through breast cancer um, at the time, uh, not long after he was born. So when it came to selling him, we, we made the decision to sell him, unfortunately. Um, but um, we've had a lot of fun just watching him race um, and having a level of involvement, which has been great. Do you remember sale day with? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, we, we were nervous. We're nervous every. We're a wreck on sales day. It's sort of um, when you're not selling one, you enjoy it. When you're selling one, uh, obviously you're nervous. Um, we, we made money on two of the foals we've sold. We lost money on two of the foals. So it is, you know, it's. Um, you, you wouldn't do it if you didn't love it. Um, so, but the sale day we went, we, we put a reserve on him and if we didn't make the reserve, we'd have kept him. Um, so we sold just over our reserve. So uh, as I said, that gave us the money to then breed another one. Um, yeah. So Brad Hewitt picked him up and in terms of his uh, relationship with you guys, did he tell you that he thought there was something there early on? What, no, what were your look, early expectations? Um, I, uh, I actually, I knew Brad had a history with the family. Um, I'm JT, um, I, I can recall watching him race in the inner city pace at Maitland. Um, I didn't know Brad in particular, but I knew they had a history with the family, so um, there was always a possibility that they could be interested. When he bought it, I was, I was really happy, obviously he went to a great stable and I knew he was gonna get every chance. His first start was pretty impressive. Were you excited by the prospects at that point? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I can recall uh, the internet that went down at our house the, the night of the race and um, right at the start of the race, um, we got it back up at the end of the race and we saw his name up in lights and we're just going, oh, this is great. Um, but then when we watched it back uh, on video afterwards, the way he won, you knew he was going to be something special um, and the times he ran. So uh, yeah, from that point on, it was, uh, was an exciting road. About midway through the season, he was able to win the Breeders' Challenge at Group 1 level. Were you there? And if so, describe the day to us. Oh yeah, it was, it was absolutely wonderful. Um, took the family down um, and yeah, we were very excited. Um, we knew he'd need a little bit of luck, um, but um, just, to, just to be involved with a horse that wins a Group 1, it's an, it's an amazing thrill. You, you know, you dream of being involved at, at the highest level and um, when, when you get there and you can actually win one, even though our involvement's small, it's, uh, it's a massive thrill. And then he doubled down at three. Yeah, yeah, and um, I, uh, I shed a tear that day. I was, uh, I was so happy. Um, it, you know, the, I love harness racing and I, I love horses. So, um, you know, as I said, to have that involvement or be a part of it, uh, yeah, it was a massive thrill. Brad Hewitt trains and drives this guy, but he's got a big ownership group involved. And I'd assume that you've been able to develop a relationship with some of those guys too. Yeah, look, um, Kristen, uh, my wife, uh, often posts a video of um, Captain's Knock as a, as a yearling or a weanling, and um, you know, those guys get to see it and comment on it. So, um, haven't got to meet them just yet, but um, you know, uh, who knows at the Eureka we might. Uh, hopefully be celebrating after the race, you never know. Did you watch the Eureka in 2023 and see how that played out and dare to dream a little bit about Captain's Oh, ab absolutely, yeah. Um, it, look, it was, a, it was a wonderful night. Uh, we had a great time. He raced in the uh, Stockade, um, the Constellation that night, um, and he'd had, I think he'd had two starts um, back off a, a long spell. Um, so there was a, a small hope, I suppose, he could have made the Eureka that year, but probably wasn't ready. Um, so yeah, we dreamed obviously that, um, you know, he'd uh, maintain that form and possibly get an invite this year. The Cordina racing team snapped him up quite early on actually. He was one of the first horses locked in. Do you remember where you were when you heard that news? Yeah, I was, I was in a meeting for work actually and I, uh, I got a text message and um, 
yeah, the meeting sort of, uh, I didn't pay much attention after that. So, um, no, it was, uh, yeah, it was great news to, to hear that. And, um, you know, uh, the breeders get a bonus out of the Eureka, which is a great initiative as well. So, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was really exciting. So it must be mixed emotions when you then go and see them race, thinking, well, what if? What if he came home and we owned him? But have you felt the same enjoyment watching him, particularly those two group ones? Yeah, look, it's so exciting. Like, I'm so nervous, I can't eat. <laughs> I'm waiting for the race, and then the best part of the night is when we go and give him a pat after. Um, so it is, it's really, really enjoyable. It's, it's the joy that they get, um, we get, when he crosses the line first. It, it's just, you can't explain it, I guess. Um, so no, it's been, hard to describe. It, it's just, it's been a great journey really. Do you think he remembers you when you go and pat him in the stables? Uh, he clocks us from like a distance. Like honestly, if we, um, if we come into the stables and we try and not go close to him too early, we can be, you know, Menangle where there's the, the two uh, top walkways. We can be at the back and he can clock us. Like you can see him turn around and like, he's like, there you are. Um, and he loves the pat, so yeah, no, he definitely remembers. September 7, the world's richest harness race. All roads lead to Menangle. I'm assuming you're booked in. Yeah, yeah. We've got a, we've got uh, two tables in the restaurant. We've got a team of 20 uh, going down. So, um, and I think this is the, the great part of the race. Um, our friendship group isn't involved in the sport, but um, they're going to band behind us and come down for for the night and um, cheer on the horse. So. You know, we'll be, there'll be 20 of us there cheering him on uh, on the night. So yeah, super excited. Are you a nervous person? And how do you think your nerves will be? Oh yeah, I am. Uh, I'm very anxious. Um, look, uh, I, I just pace up and down. I, I, don't like to, I don't like the horse to see me before a race. So I sort of tend to stay away. Um, I sort of try and get up in the grandstand and watch him from afar. But um, I just don't want him to see me before the race. But um, Look, win, lose or draw, you know, I sort of, um, I'll be there giving him a pat after the race. What do you think the celebrations will be like if Captain's not crosses the line first? Oh, I think there's danger of me doing a victory lap, Brit. I, uh, I keep telling my kids that uh, I'd be that excited, I'd, I'd do a lap myself. But, um, oh look, there'll be a lot of noise and uh, yeah, I think um, it, it'd, just be, it'd just be wonderful, you know, it'd be exciting. Um, and then, you know, it's exciting for the mayor, it's exciting for her progeny. So, um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's just, you know, it's the world's richest harness race, isn't it? Um, so, you know, if, you, if you've got to win in that, it's a pretty special thing. As much as you'd love to still own him, I'm sure you get just as much enjoyment out of watching him. If he was to win this race and you've still got the mayor, you're still breeding from her, do you think it could be life changing for you in some ways? Oh, absolutely. Um, it's it, oh, it's something that people can't take off you, um, and you can't money can't buy it. So, to have a level of involvement, um, it's it's just a memory that you hold forever, um, which is great, and something you can tell your grandkids and uh, what have you. So, um, yeah, it is life changing. Um, it's life changing. You're part of history. You watch North American harness racing, and you clearly enjoy that. How special is it? not only to be involved in the world's richest harness race, but to have the world's richest harness race here. Oh, it's wonderful. Um, it's a credit to our sport, definitely. Um, and, and it shows that the sport is growing, which is great. Um, it puts Australia up, up in headlights, I suppose, uh, on that world scene. So um, any, any initiative like that, I think is a good thing for the sport. So what are your dreams for the future? Do you think you've reached the pinnacle with Captain's Knock? Do you have bigger dreams than that? Oh, look, I think Scarlett's got a very good filly to come, I think. If we can get her, she's had three colts in a row. Um, so we're definitely hoping that this Sweet Lou service um, comes to fruition uh, in a filly. So, um, yeah, I would like to see, I think I could convince John to keep a filly. Um, and I'd like to see her run and, and you know, she could be in the Eureka too. <laughs>
It was wonderful to catch up with John and Kristen Rudder a few weeks ago to find out a little bit more about the Captain's Knock story. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I did uh, learning about him, his story, and I doubt there'll be two more excited people come September 7 at Menangle to cheer home uh, this horse that they really orchestrated raised him, got him to a point where he was picked up by Brad Hewitt. Brad's done a great job with him and now he's a genuine winning hope in the world's richest harness race. We're going to take a break here on On The Pace and on the other side, it's time for our weekly dose of Michael Guerin. 